I'm John White, and one of the most common questions that I get is why has my tree died? And the answer to that is not simple because there's a lot of things that are involved in why a tree might possibly die off. And with me is Dr. John Maxwell. And Dr. Maxwell is a professor at New Mexico State University in Arboriculture, the study of trees. And John, what do you see as maybe one of the leading factors for early tree death in the landscape? Well, one of the most common problems, John, is that the trees are not planted and cared for properly initially, and they're dead and just waiting to, to die. Uh, a good example is this cottonwood here. This was a poor quality seedling that was purchased at the nursery. And you can see that the original ground line here is about eight or nine inches above where the first original root system are. There are a few roots here that have developed, but these are have sprouted. And this plant was planted way too deep, and so you're having trouble getting enough oxygen to the system, and the, the tree will eventually succumb to, to uh, uh, the lack of oxygen. So you need to make sure that you buy good quality plant material and then plant it properly. Okay. You have some other examples here. Well, this, this is an ash tree that uh, shows circling roots from the container. 15 gallon. This would be a 15 gallon, yes. And when you plant this, if you don't do something to the roots at the time of planting, they will always continue to grow in this circle and eventually strangle the root system. Now, it's very easy to correct this. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, a good nurseryman's knife, but basically what you need to do is take your knife and cut the root ball on three or four sides, just about one inch into the roots, sever all of these roots. And what that does is shock the system and starts those roots growing back out into the soil in their normal growth habit. Roots typically don't grow in a circle. They tend to grow laterally. So if you'll cut these, they'll begin to do that and get established, and you should have no problem with the tree. Okay. And then you have one other example. Well, this is, this is an example of how not to do it. This is <laughs> uh, uh, Mexican bird of paradise. It's a common xeric uh, plant here in the southwest. Very beautiful, very hardy. Uh, but this is one that we had planted in the garden here. It was nine years old, and it never would stand upright. We had to stake it every year. We finally grew tired of that and pulled it out of the ground, and what we can see is that this was grown in a six-inch pot. The roots were never pruned, and you can see it does sort of look like the head of Medusa. <laughs> and uh, here's the original taproot that eventually died off. Uh, but there's no way for this thing to get anchored. And if you're, it's very important for most trees, it's extremely important if you're going to a xeriscape. Many native shrubs, native trees, have a strong dominant taproot. And if you, if you don't prune those roots at the time of planting, those roots will just continue to grow in a circle and they'll never get established. Okay. In fact, we can go look at a plant where we've got some problems that uh, are occurring uh, with time. Okay, let's take a look at it. John, we've got a tree here that has a potential problem developing. Now, as you can see on your side, see that, that flare? Yeah. That's indicative of the, the roots below ground spreading out and anchoring this tree. And they're supposed to do that. They're supposed to do that. But on this side, you can see we don't have that. All right, it goes straight in. It goes straight in, and very likely what we've got on this side is a root that's girdling this part of the trunk. So if we're looking at a tree that's in a yard, then that is a potential problem. This there. is a potential problem. It's a potential weakness and hazard where the tree could eventually topple. Okay. Do we have another example to look at? We do. Uh, well, but before we look at that, this, this particular one we can probably fix. Okay. And we have done that in numerous cases where you'll see the root developing. We probably can't see it. I'll have to do quite a bit of digging. But if you do see a root that's growing around here, very often at this stage here, you can cut it off and you can get it to recover. Okay. Now, trees are remarkable. They'll, they'll re if they'll live long enough before falling over, they can recover from a lot of things. Okay. Let's look at another example. Okay. John, show us how you take a limb off a tree properly. 
Well, first I'll show you improperly. Very often what uh, the homeowner will do is make a single cut and what will very often happen is that you'll peel the bark off the tree here and damage that portion. Okay. Now it's easily solved if you'll go ahead and make two cuts. If you'll just go ahead and cut through the bark on the lower end and you just have to cut into the wood there, then you okay. can go ahead and, and cut the, the branch off and it'll break off without stripping the bark. Okay. And you remove most of the weight of the branch that way, and then your final cut would be near the branch collar. Okay. You want to avoid leaving a stub like this. This one should have been cut about an inch closer to the trunk here. Okay, and the branch collar is that swollen area that's kind of right at the... Right. Yeah, the swollen area. Okay. John, thank you very much for being on Southwest Yard and Garden. My pleasure. Thank you.